Hey guys, welcome to another episode of On This Day, where we go over historical facts of things that have happened on this day in the past. We also cover birthdays, uh, other historical facts. Again, we try to save the best for last. You are going to want to tune in tomorrow, as we have America's most favorite Canadian who passed away one year ago. Uh, on tom and that'll be on tomorrow's episode, November the 8th. Uh, we only have one birthday to go over today. That is Joni Mitchell, a Canadian singer-songwriter. She turned 78 years old today. We want to wish her a happy birthday. And we're going to jump right into it. In the year 2000, politician Hillary Clinton was elected in the U.S. Senate, becoming the first first lady to win an elective office. In 1996, NASA launched the Mars Global Surveyor, a robotic spacecraft, designed to carry out a long-term study of our planet. Unfortunately, we did lose contact with the spacecraft in 2006, so that was a huge waste of taxpayers' money. But what can you do? Uh, in 1991, American professional basketball player Magic Johnson announced that he was HIV positive and was immediately retiring from the sport. He did, however, uh, play in the 1995-96 season. In 1989, American politician Douglas Wilder was elected to the governor of Virginia, becoming the first African American to win a U.S. gubernatorial election. In 1980, movie star Steve McQueen, known for his portrayal as Macho Loners in such films as The Great Escape and Bullet, passed away at the age 50. Anybody who watches Pawn Stars knows that that's Rick Harrison's favorite actor, one of his favorite people. He does idolize him. Um, unfortunately, I've never seen any of his films. That's before my time. Uh, in 1967, American lawyer and politician Carl Stokes was elected to the mayor of Cleveland, Ohio, becoming the first African American to lead a major U.S. city. In 1962, after losing the governor's election in California, American politician Richard Richard Nixon gave what he called his last press conference, telling reporters that you won't have Nixon to kick around anymore. He was elected president six years later, so we got to kick him around a little bit more. In 1962, Eleanor Roosevelt, who was the first lady of the United States and one of the world's most widely admired and powerful women, known as a diplomat and a humanitarian, passed away in New York City at the age of 78. In 1944, Franklin D. Roosevelt defeated Thomas E. Dewey and was elected to an unprecedented fourth term as President of the United States. Now, we did talk about, in yesterday's episode, about presidents running more than two terms. Uh, it's not a possibility anymore, but it was something that, at one point in time, people were able to do. Um, in 1940, the Tacoma Bridge connected to the Olympic Peninsula with, excuse me, in 1940, the Tacoma Narrows Bridge connecting the Olympic Peninsula with Tacoma, Washington, broke up in a wind about 42 miles per hour or 67 kilometers per hour for those of you on the metric system. In 1916, Janet Rankin won a seat in the U.S. House of Representatives, becoming the first woman elected to Congress. Congratulations to her. And for all women around the world, that was, you know, a huge accomplishment. In 1913, French author Albert Camus, who received the Nobel Peace Prize for Literature in 1957 for such classic works as The Stranger, was born. In 1874, Harper's Weekly featured a Thomas Nast cartoon about the possibility of a U.S. President Ulysses S. Grant seeking a third term. The Republican vote was represented by an elephant, the animal which appeared in several other Republican-related cartoons by Nast, eventually became the party's official logo, so now we know where that came from. In 1837, a newspaper editor, Elijah P. Lovejoy, was murdered by a mob in Alton, Illinois, while defending his press building. In 1811, in the Battle of Tipper Canoe, a seasoned U.S. 
exped expedential expeditionary force under Major General William Henry Harrison defeated Shawnee Indians led by the Tukamash brother Laliwaski known as the Prophet. You'll have to excuse me on that one. That's a little bit out of my vernacular. I couldn't read those names if I wanted to and I apologize for any historians out there and the mispronunciation. But again, always saving the best for last this time. Not necessarily the best for last, but whatever it is. Today's featured event uh, on November 7th in the year 2000, the U.S. presidential election ended in a statistical tie between Democrat Al Gore and Republican George W. Bush, only to be settled on December 12th by the U.S. Supreme Court after a bitter, bitter legal dispute. Interesting fact about Al Gore, um, he actually claims to have invented, to have invented the internet. Um, if anything, I'd say he was probably just sitting in a room when people talked about it and nobody else wanted to take credit for it and he stood up and said he would do it. As always, we thank you for tuning in. Don't forget to like, comment, share. Be sure to check out tomorrow's episode. Uh, we'll go over America's favorite Canadian. He passed away one year ago tomorrow. Um, be sure to tune in to check out who that is. I'm sure most of you probably know. We thank you for watching and um, have a wonderful day. Thank you.